Should have beaten toys. So, it appears the time has finally come for me to get my own trilogy. Here's the premise. That may need some elaboration. There are many different types of actors in the film world. You have your leads, taking on every emotion and getting all the glory. Then there's the supporting players, people that the story cannot exist without, but tend to have smaller roles. It's not necessarily an easier part to play, but it definitely requires less endurance as far as carrying the story. Trust me when I say that stepping into that limelight is not exactly easy. There's a lot of weight that's on your shoulders that you don't expect, but still, we stupidly take the risks. Lord knows why. It's not always a disaster, with the paths that Bill Murray or Martin Lawrence or Jim Carrey blazed to stardom as proof. But sadly, there are times when even one step away from the comedic sidekick to leading man causes irreversible damage. Today, let's focus on Chris Elliott's journey. Once upon a time in the 80s, a goofy young man with a receding hairline and an awkward demeanor got a few bit parts in Hollywood, one of which being in the award-winning abyss, when suddenly his television show got cancelled and things might have been looking rough for him, except he happened to be the cameraman in the overnight sensation known as Groundhog's Day. He played that part briefly, but well, downplaying his comedy to just the right level for a burnt-out side character. He was perfect for that role. It would only be a matter of time before he found his own ticket to stardom. The very next year, he got his own film. How did it turn out? Way worse than you expect. Let's get this over with. Here's Nathaniel, a 32-year-old fancy lad just graduated from finishing school to take over the family hotel chain in Hawaii. No, I still have no idea what that means after reading it aloud. Wait, if this story takes place in an age with cars, why does this boat have masts and barnacles from the 17th century? How does this appliance make sense at all? Why did Tim Burton produce this? The questions are never ending, so I need to stop nitpicking the details for just a moment and let the story play out, if indeed there is one to be found. You're driving too fast. Slow it down. Not that slow, imbecile. Speed up. You're Why does this driver put up with the brat? If I were him... What do you think you get the oh. hell out of here, you I, fresh I guess I am him. I guess the movie's sick of his antics, too. We're less than ten minutes in and it's already kicked him to the curb. To rot and to sweat. What did I do to deserve this? After one of the most blatantly stupid, forced confusions I've ever witnessed about a fork in the road, Nathaniel finds himself in the little fishing village, where... Well, 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 what's on your mind, little girl? Is he being sarcastic? Uh, you know what you are? You're, you're one of those little, uh, fancy lads, aren't you? <laughs> Boy, you're cute. Okay. Gosh, what a sweet little outfit. Is it your little spring outfit? <laughs> you couldn't be cuter. You're so adorable. Sincere? Hey, would you like to buy a monkey? Insane? For a yellow-eyed, gamey-smelling lowlife, you really have quite a decent heart about you, sir. <laughs> well, I'm not going to touch you, I'm not going to shake your hand or get near you because you're all of that, yeah. but I am going to be on my way. Okay, good okay. for you. Yeah, off I go. Yeah. Hey, listen, have a, have a good trip, okay. Susie. Bye-bye. Think about me, all right? <laughs> Was their intention just to leave me hanging here having no idea what to feel? Because that's exactly what I, and I believe the rest of the audience, felt at this point in the film. Why would you continue past this point? Why am I continuing past this point? I should just leave right now. <sighs> I do not want to face what's ever on the other side of that door. I guess I'm going to finish. <laughs> so, after the monkey salesman drives the plot back in the right direction, that logic should never apply to anything, by the way. Nathaniel finally reaches the ship to find... Hey, um, I'm looking for the steward of the QC. 
I'm watching the boat till everyone gets back from lunch. I look much too disheveled to board, but I assure you the captain will understand given the circumstances. How? You know the captain? I should say so. He owes his entire career to my daddy. Well, okay, since you know him and all. You know, Andy sometimes gets the short end of the stick sidekicking for Conan, but... Okay, looks like all we gotta do is shift her 250,000 degrees northeast, and I'll we'll be headed straight for Hawaii. It's never been this bad. I was never real good at figuring stuff out. Captain says I'm dumb as a carp. Here's how a harem girl dances. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. It seriously sounded like a page fell out of the script right there. I, poor, poor Andy. Nathaniel takes this very not cruise ship setting in stride, spontaneously playing the man who knew too little card. Uh, uh, oh, 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 I see. This is the Queen Catherine. It's, it's one of those theme ships, isn't it? Yes, I've read about these things. Where we passengers pretend we're common types and slum it up a bit. <laughs> Deliciously chic. <laughs> I say random because there's absolutely no reason for him to assume this. This plot just had to make him think that so he'd stay on the ship too long. How am I finding a new low every minute? The crew finally returns and sets sail immediately, insulting the cabin boy as they go. Finally, someone in the story has the right idea. That'll make dealing with Cabin Boy easier. <laughs> so after failing to bribe the crew with his charm and condescension, Nathaniel breaks down. I'm at my wit's end. I can't take it. Let's see that again. Can't take it. Oh, oh my God! I found my favorite part of the film. One more time. Can't take it. It's like therapy. Shortly after this, Nathaniel loses a crew member due to total incompetence. Poor Kenny once again falling into the wayside of the story due to death. The captain then appoints Nathaniel as the new cabin boy, which goes about like this. What's inside stinks and that's all I'm doing. I'm done. Hi. He did it. This may not be enough. After a whole sequence of Nathaniel ruining the ship with his complete ineptness, the crew finally comes up with a plan. Outward watch. Here's how it works. We'll let out some rope so you can drift along behind us. Exactly uh, how much rope are you going to let out? About 10 feet or so? Two miles worth. That sounds a trifle peculiar. All right, Geronimo. Let's get your ass out there. In about a week when your shift is over, just give this rope a little tug and we'll haul you in. Once again, the audience cheers at the man being sent to his death. Why does the camera insist on following him? Do I really want to see him die of exposure? Ah, uh, good afternoon, madam. Would you like to buy a donkey? Donkeys are on sale today through Thursday. Oh, God. That's what we're going to see, isn't it? I'm mixed on how I should feel about this. Okay. Well, you know, most people would think they were insane if they saw something like that. But luckily, I have an open mind about this sort of thing, and I'm not... <gasps> now, I know what you're thinking. What could be stranger than a big, fat-ass, remote cupcake? Hey, how about one that spits tobacco? <gasps> Seriously, what was in that stuff? So Nathaniel survives the impossible, reconnects with the crew, and resumes their happy life of... You know what? This? I'm done with it. I, I had a plan. I really did. I thought, oh, this will be a recurring joke. Here's a game. Okay, we can use that clip all over and over. It's going to make me feel better. It's not going to make me feel better. You want to know why? Because this film is so much worse than I thought it was going to be. This whole story is stereotypes. Every single note has been sung before. Everything is so identifiable as to be totally painful to the audience. We've all seen these stories before. We've just seen them told in story form, not in, well, look at this plot. I don't know exactly what this means, but a giant iceberg just winked at me. Not a promising development. The iceberg winking at him is a plot point. Talk about an embarrassing obituary. Ah, poked to death by a giant human iceberg. Ah.
there are worse movies out there. There are those that have absolutely no redeemable value whatsoever. This is not one of those movies. If we dumb it down to its basic elements, you see a children's book. I'll show you. Here we see young Nathaniel, fresh from his schooling, graduating to take over his father's Hawaiian hotel company. When suddenly, he takes a wrong turn at the road, and he ends up on a ship with a bunch of crusty old sailors. But by no means is this a child-friendly movie. Don't get that impression. Oh, there is nothing kid-friendly about this. He sails off to the sea to find an adventure, and he finds a lovely lady swimming from Maryland to Maryland. That plot point is straight out of a kid's book. I'm gonna stop trying to rationalize this movie. There's no point. There is no rationalizing it. This was Chris Elliott's chance. He worked with them on the story. This was his baby. He wanted this to take off. This is the essence of his comedy, his high comedy. You wanna know what it lists his accomplishes are in the back? There's something about Mary and Scary Movie 2. Those are the two best roles he's ever been in, according to Cabin Boy. <sighs> I feel that this is really his biggest stumbling block, and I see exactly why he ended up where he is. Cabin Boy pulls no punches when it should. It is complete balls-to-the-wall insanity, but not in a redeeming way. There is morally no point to the story. If you look at it from that kid's book angle, sure, embrace who you are, not by who your family tells you you are, but by your own actions. Well, his actions tell me that he should have remained a fancy lad. You heard me. He should have stayed that powdered wig wearing, frou-frou, powdered bottom, powdered everything. Nancy boy. Because he failed completely as a cabin boy. And this movie fails as a film. It's just gonna get worse from here, isn't it? I don't want to leave. But if I don't, that doorbell will ring, and I have no idea what else will come through that door. For all I know, he has a copy of Man of the Hands of Fate on Blu-ray. Good lord, that's not a trail I want to go down. I mean, it's great they found the work print and all, but I am not subjecting anyone else to that film. Especially without commentary. Oh.